Hey there do-it-yourself technicians. Today we're talking about turning an old router into better Wi-Fi in your home. Back in November last year I did episode 132 where we talked about getting better Wi-Fi into the dead spots in your home. In that episode I mentioned using an old router as an additional Wi-Fi access point. A viewer, Scott, messaged me the other day to ask if I'd done a video on exactly how to set that up. This one's for you, Scotty, and anyone else that needs to know. Many people have old routers lying around in that box of tech junk that they keep, especially in Australia, where many new homes are connected to the NBN, or National Broadband Network, and have received new equipment. If you have an old Wi-Fi router, you can turn it into better Wi-Fi for your home or office. Now, I'm not talking about a wireless repeater. In this case, I'm talking about a wired connection between the main router and the new router. Something like one of these, but probably longer. You can run a cable like this yourself, or get a friend or electrician to run one for you. It's just a standard piece of Cat 5 or 6 cable that you can buy anywhere, like here. This is a bit of a weird looking router from D-Link that I have because somebody else cleaned out their tech box at home and gave it to me. A glance at the bottom gives me the model number so that I can look up the specifications and it also gives the link, username and password for the configuration page which we'll need later. Googling D-Link DIR654 gives me a link straight to the manual and the very first page tells me what I need to know. This is a wireless N router or Wi-Fi 4. This Netgear router is a little bit more familiar shape but checking the specs we can see it's only 54 megabits per second which is 802.11g or wireless 3. I mean it's better than nothing and fine for all manner of internet use but it will be somewhat limited in range as well as speed. While we're talking about speed it's worth noting that 54 megabits per second while considered slow is generally faster than the internet connections into most Australian homes. 25 megabits per second is the standard NBN package sold, I believe. So having Wi-Fi 3 is not likely to be slowing you down at all. The steps I'm about to show you are an example based on this router. With a bit of hunting around, you should be able to find similar settings in your router. If not, you could try the router's manual. If you're really stuck, there's a link up here to join the Facebook group where you can ask your questions. Or failing that, send me an email. Enough of the chat. How do we actually do it? I like to start with a clean slate. So I'm going to factory reset this router and get rid of any configuration that it had. This is especially useful if somebody has changed the admin password to the router. In fact, it's the only way in. Bye bye Wi-Fi named Chris inside. The manual tells me to find the reset hole in the bottom of the router. And while the device is on, stick a straightened paper clip in the hole and hold the button in there down for 10 seconds and then let it go. After 30 seconds to a minute the router should reboot back to its factory default settings and I can see that it's broadcasting a new Wi-Fi called D-Link. When I connect to that network it doesn't ask for a password but shows instead a message that the Wi-Fi is open and anyone might be able to see my traffic on that network. That's okay because there's no password and no security. At this point, my laptop will lose internet access as well because the D-Link isn't connected to the network yet. That's okay, we can always switch back to our normal Wi-Fi if something happens to go wrong. We know from the label on the bottom that we need to connect to the IP address 192.168.0.1 and that the login is admin and there is no password. It recommends setting a password and that is a good idea but I recommend not doing it until the end just to make the setup process easier. Just make sure you don't forget it otherwise you'll have to factory reset the router and start again. There's also a link up here to join my mailing list and download my handy network template information booklet and use that to record your settings and passwords. Now we want to click on the setup menu. The internet connection itself should be pretty seamless as long as you connect to the WAN port on the router. It should just work. The wired LAN ports will also just work. What we need to configure is the wireless side. If you've configured your own wireless modem, this will be pretty much the same. In fact, one of the things you can do here is set this new router up 
with the same Wi-Fi name and password as your main router and most of your devices should just automatically connect. Or if you want, you can set up a new wireless name and password for the new branch of the network. You can use the wireless connection setup wizard to step you step by step through the process. But I personally prefer the manual wireless configuration setup as it shows basically everything on one page together. This is what it looks like before I fill it out. This is what it looks like after. I've filled in the network name or SSID. I chose WPA personal for the security and then changed the WPA mode to WPA2 for better security. And I filled in the password down the bottom known on this modem as the pre-shared key. Once you save the settings, you'll be disconnected. The router will reboot, and if you've chosen the same wireless name and password as your main network, will probably just reconnect when it reboots. Or you'll need to put in the new password for the new network name. At this point, you plug the network cable into the WAN port of the router and one of the LAN ports on your main router, and everything should be just up and running. Unless, of course, it doesn't. At this point, I had an issue and a realisation. The network addresses on the new network were exactly the same as the ones on the existing network. They were both 192.168.0. something. Both routers were 192.168.0.1 on their respective networking, and it was causing a clash. One solution was to move the new router to a completely different network address in a different IP range, in this case 10.0.0.1, and then let the routers sort it out from there. This actually worked perfectly, and if all you need is internet access, then you're done. If you're running any local servers though, this will cause an issue. My final solution was to turn the new router back to the 192.168.0 network, right up the end at 192.168.0.254 the last address in the range, but it could have been any free address, and then turn DHCP off on the new router. The final change was to plug the network connection into one of the LAN ports on the new router as well, so that now they're both on the same network, but your Wi-Fi is coming from the new router, but all of the main network settings are coming from your main router. Well, this was a little bit more complex than I'd intended, but we got there in the end. Hopefully the simple solution will work for you. It also proves that not everything always goes smoothly. The great thing about working with computers is nobody dies and you can just keep trying different settings. It's worth noting that if you are using a true wireless access point designed for that purpose, you wouldn't have this issue as they're designed to be on the same network but rebroadcast the DHCP from that network to the Wi-Fi. Question of the day, do you need a network extension? Are you ready to give this a try? Let me know in the comments down below. And if this video was useful to you, give me a thumbs up. Thank you. The Tech Doctor exists to help you become your own technician. Learn about the technology, protect yourself from the bad guys, and fix it when it breaks. If you're on YouTube, there's some older videos you may not have seen before here and here. And you can subscribe to the channel by clicking here or the mailing list by clicking up the top. Thank you so much for watching, have a great day, and I'll see you on the next episode. Bye.